graphite pencil blending and shading techniques. That's what we're going to be discussing in today's video. Welcome back to my channel. On this channel, you'll find all things watercolor, as well as lots of drawing videos, mixed media, even some business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing, it's free. And if you click the little bell icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. Make at least one free video a week here on YouTube. So we're going to be looking at shading in this video and blending. We're going to be talking about ordinary standard graphite pencils, but most of the tips in this video also apply to colored pencils. Now I'm going to be concentrating on getting smooth blends, in other words, sort of faded out edges, that lovely smooth texture that you're all looking for, because I simply feel that this is the area that people have the most difficulty with. Of course, I could do a video all about how to get different textures with pencils, but I don't want to make this video too long. So if you'd like me to make that video, do let me know. But in this video, we're going to be concentrating on sort of what I would call smooth blending. Now, in order to achieve this, there's four things we need to consider. We need to consider the paper, very important. We also need to consider the pencils and the pencil grade. We need to consider the way you're actually applying the pencil. And then we need to look at blending tools. Blending tools are the secret tools of professionals. I pretty much guarantee that any professional pencil artist or colored pencil artist will be using some kind of blending tools. Now, don't worry if you're thinking to yourself, well, I haven't got any of those, Michelle. There are many that are just to be found around your house. So there are some that you will have that you can start using today. And I'll also go through a few of the ones that you can buy. And they're all, to be honest, pretty inexpensive. So let's jump into the first thing we need to discuss, and that's paper. So let's have a chat about the right paper for pencil work. I've got a few different types here, so I'm going to sketch on. I've got a, um, what's this? I think this is a 2B pencil. So let's have a look. Now, this is the one that you should be using. Let's put these others aside for a second. We'll compare in a moment. In the UK, and I believe in Europe, we call this cartridge paper. Now, I've had Americans be very, very confused about the meaning of the word cartridge. It's an old fashioned word. It just pertains to a high quality sketch paper. So if you buy a good quality sketch pad, cartridge paper is what you will have. So what are you looking for? You're looking for a certain thickness to it. Now it shouldn't be as thick as watercolor paper, but neither should it be very thin and flimsy because any kind of paper that you use has to have a bit of resilience. It has to stand up to an eraser without getting a hole in it. And it's actually got a tooth to it. Now, you can't feel the tooth or the grain. It should feel just kind of matte, nicely smooth. But if you look closely at it, you'll see it's got tiny, tiny bumps to it, not anything like watercolor paper. And when you sketch on it, can you see there are tiny gaps? Now, that doesn't mean there's something wrong with the paper. Obviously, that's going to give you a few challenges when shading. But nevertheless, that tiny tooth that the paper has is important because if you don't have it, then it won't grip the little bits of graphite pencil and you won't get much pencil deposited on the paper, which means you won't be able to get any darks. So this is your standard sketch paper. It's not the only option. Let's compare it to printer paper. So here I've got some very cheap printer paper and it is very cheap. And you may have something similar to this if you buy a very cheap sketch pad. The thing to look out for is paper that's overly thin and overly shiny. So if your paper feels really, really smooth and almost like satin, that's not necessarily a good thing. So I'm sketching on it here. And forgive me, it is picking up a little bit of the wooden board underneath. That's something to be aware of. You won't normally get that if you're working in a sketch pad. And if you're working with loose sheets, do put something underneath them, like some more paper. But can you see how much darker this one is and how much nicer and how much more grain it's got? Now, I didn't actually press any harder with this one than with this one. But because this thin, shiny paper doesn't have much tooth to it, it's not grabbing the pencil and depositing it properly on the paper. So beware of paper that's too thin and too shiny. Let's look now at some watercolor papers. So I've got two here, they're just different brands. This one here is quite cheap. This one is, it's still a student paper, but it's a little bit more pricey. So if I sketch on this, you can see that although it takes the pencil, we've got some real, real big gaps forming, a lot of texture here, and it's gonna be very, very difficult, even with blending tools, to smooth that out. And the same is going to happen on this more expensive paper. It's just got less of a sort of a machine built tooth to it. Again, it's taking the pencil well, but look at all this texture. 
even with blending tools, that's gonna to be hard to get rid of. But there is a type of watercolor paper that will take pencil well, and it's this one here. It's a hot press paper. So hot press watercolor paper is smooth. Now, why would you use this instead of cartridge paper when basically it's just a more expensive, thicker version? The answer is if you are using some kind of pencil where you're gonna put water on at some stage. So if you're using pencil or you're using watercolor pencils or you're combining pencil with a little bit of watercolor paint, you know that at some stage you're going to get some water on your paper. Then you need to use hot press paper because your standard cartridge paper is going to wrinkle very, very badly and you'll probably get a whole form if you put enough water on it. So hot press paper is the answer. And you can see that this one again takes the pencil nicely. And if we compare it to the other two watercolor papers, it's far superior in terms of getting a smooth blended effect. So we don't want watercolor papers. We don't want thin, shiny, cheap paper. What we want is a high quality sketch paper, sometimes called cartridge paper. Or if we're going to add water to the paper, we need hot press paper. There's absolutely no need to be using any kind of watercolor paper if you're not adding water at any stage. You're just throwing your money away because your sketch paper is much, much cheaper. So as you have seen, paper is very, very important, but so are pencils. It's not so much about the manufacturer, it's more about the pencil grades. So let's cover this next, because if you have the wrong type of pencil, you'll find you won't be able to get very good shading or blending techniques at all. So I've got a selection of pencils here. This one actually looks like I've used it to um, pierce a tube of paint. I would, I would never do such a thing. Circumstantial evidence there, I think we'll find that's called. So what you've got with pencils is you've got a huge range and only about half of them are used for sketching. So we've got H's, I think I've got an H here somewhere. Here we go, six H. Now H stands for hard and all of the H grades, they're really for things like technical drawing and for architects. They create such a hard mark on the paper and hard marks always leave dense and they can be hard to erase. So you don't really need pencils like this. Midway between those and the softer grades, you get things like H HB, you might have one that says H or F, which is fine. And all of those are around the middle level. Now an HB can be useful, especially for botanical drawing. It can produce very fine lines, so you can get more accuracy with it. You need to remember that, as I said, a harder pencil can dent the paper and be harder to erase. So if you are using an HB, you want to make sure that you're pressing very lightly. And a pencil like this is not good for shading, and it's certainly not good for blending but it is good for fine detail, so we've got our HB. Then we go into the B grades, and this is where most of your sketching is going to be done. So you might do perhaps an outline in an HB if you wanted to. So next I've got a 2B pencil, and this one you can see already is softer and blacker. We can use it on the point like this, we can use it on the side. And if we compare it to the HB, you're getting a more smudgy mark that's slightly darker. Let's go up to a much higher one. So here we've got 5B. And again, the marks become darker and they become smudgier. The advantage is you can get darker marks. You're going to be able to blend and smudge much more easily. The disadvantage is it's less accurate. And again, it smudges easily. So smudging easily is both a benefit. And of course, it could be a negative if you are accidentally smudging your work. A way of avoiding this is to lean on a clean piece of paper tissue. And I've got various other B grades here. This one's a 3B. Most ranges go up to an 8B. Some manufacturers go right up to a 9B. And that's basically all you need to know. And your sketching work will be entirely done with the B grades. Unless you're doing something very, very photorealistic or working as a draftsman, you don't really need to go near the H's at all. Can I pop in briefly and ask if you have pressed the like button, the thumbs up for me, if you are getting some value from this video, if it's useful to you, please do press that like button for me. If you can like, share, subscribe, which is free, or leave me a comment, it all helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Videos like this take many, many hours and days to make. I've just passed 100,000 subscribers. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me here on YouTube. So let's look now at application. Let's look at the way you actually sketch and apply the pencil because this is going to help you to get a smoother effect. So let's look at technique. This is really quite simple. Now, if you hold your pencil more upright like this, be aware the angle of the camera is not always quite as it appears. So I'm holding my pencil upright and you can see I can get a more definitive mark. So if I'm doing detail, this would be a good way to hold my pencil. 
When it comes to sketching, you want to hold your pencil at a much lower angle and you want to make sure that you've got quite a long lead. You can see this one here needs sharpening. And so if I'm trying to sort of, you know, shade with it, I'm going to have a lot of trouble. This one has a longer lead. You do get certain pencil sharpness that will produce an even longer lead than this. And some artists like to use a knife and actually shave their pencil like this. Depends how good you are with your hands. You can get a very long point like that, or you can stab yourself. It really depends on the level of your own motor skills and how clumsy you happen to be. I personally prefer to use a pencil sharpener, but a knife is an option. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hold the pencil at a much lower angle to the paper. And you see that we can get much broader marks than we got with that short stubby pencil. Now let's consider hatching and cross hatching. So hatching just means to go in one direction like this. And with a soft pencil, this is a 4B, I can actually get quite smooth shading like this. But if I want to smooth it out even further, I can then go in the opposite direction and I can cross hatch so that I'm approaching the paper grain from all directions. And that's going to give me a much smoother application. Of course, cross hatching could be done, you know, in a much more deliberate, more textured way. As I said, that's probably a subject for another video. We're talking in this video about smooth blending. And by going in multiple directions over the same area, you will deposit the pencil as evenly as possible. And we've still got some little white gaps here. And I'm going to be showing you what to do about that next. Now for my favorite bit, blending tools. If you haven't used blending tools, I think you're going to be amazed at what you can achieve. I'm going to go through eight different blending tools. We're gonna to run through them very quickly. These aren't exclusively the only blending tools that exist. These are just the most common ones that I've used. If you'd like a longer video where I actually compare the effectiveness of these tools one against the other, do let me know and I'll make that video for you. But first of all, let's have a look at the tools we can use to get a much smoother blend than simply applying the pencil. If you haven't done any of this before, it's gonna be an absolute game changer. So I've applied some pencil to a much larger area. Now you notice when I was applying that pencil, I didn't press hard and this is really important. If you press really hard, so if I get my pencil and I press really hard like this, what I'm actually doing is I'm flattening the paper surface. All of that tooth that we talked about has now been burnished and made flat and shiny. And what you'll find is that not only can you not lift all of that pencil out, you'll also find that you can't add more on. If you manage to burnish the paper accidentally, you'll find that you're trying to get the area darker and it just won't accept any more graphite because the tooth of the paper has been completely flattened. So you don't want to be burnishing like this. So we've applied an area here. I mean, we can certainly go darker. We can go darker, but we're just building up in very light layers. Now, how can we blend this so it looks even smoother? So let's go through some tools. The first tool, of course, is on the ends of your hands and you don't need sparkly nail varnish like me. So you can just blend with your fingers. Now, I don't like doing this and there's two reasons for that. This is one reason. And the second reason is that we all have oil in our hands. Now, it's winter here at the moment. My hands are actually very dry, but most of the time your hands may sweat a little bit or just the natural oils that are in your skin. They're going to get deposited on the paper and that's never a good thing. So I would avoid blending with your fingers. I would even go further and say that if you're working on a large drawing, you want to be leaning on a piece of paper towel or kitchen paper, that's going to stop smudging and it's gonna keep your skin and the paper clean. So if we don't wanna use our fingers, what's next? The next thing I have for you is one of these. It's a silicon tool. They sometimes call these color shapers. This one happens to have a brush on the end. That means nothing, but you can get them in a selection of sizes. They're quite soft and you can apply them to the paper and you can blend. See how already much more effective than my fingers were. And the point of any of these blending tools is actually to push the graphite into the gaps without going as far as burnishing the paper. Next up is one of my other really favorite tools, and this is a torsion or a paper stump. So these are made from rolled paper. You can sharpen them. And these are great and you can be really quite accurate with these and they come as you see in a variety of sizes. So if you're shading right up to the edge of something, you can be really, really delicate with these paper tools. Another option for you is a brush. So here I've got quite a cheap little acrylics brush. Now this one is much softer and more gentle. And you can imagine that this is useful if you're doing something really, really delicate like skin and you just want those soft, soft blended edges. I would advise you to use something like an acrylics brush. 
certainly a synthetic brush. You don't want to be using a very soft watercolor brush. For one thing, you'll mess up the point. For another thing, it'll just be too floppy to have much effect on the paper. So you can see that this one takes longer and it's much more delicate, but you do get this beautiful soft blended effect. Next up, I have a Derwent blending pencil. So this is shaped like a pencil. It can be sharpened like a pencil. Not entirely sure what it's made of, but it's a good thing anyway. And again, you can blend with this. It's much harder than the other tools, so you can see I'm actually getting much of a darker effect here. Now this is a great tool. I tend to use this one more for colored pencil work. If you haven't used a blending tool like this for colored pencils, it's an absolute game changer. They do also sell this one, which is a burnishing tool, which is meant to actually burnish the paper. So if you've got to the final part of your drawing, and there's nothing else that you need to do, but you just want to make the area shiny, then you can use a burnishing tool. I really don't find this one anywhere near as useful. I would say certainly for graphite pencil. I mean, graphite pencil, one of the downsides of it is the shininess. Yes, I know there are some brands that have bought out matte graphite pencils. Let me know if you'd like me to review those on the channel. But really, I think a burnishing tool is probably best for when you're working in colored pencils. You try and do something shiny like berries. But most of the time, I don't really find myself reaching for this but the blending tool is absolutely fabulous. Now let's look at some tools that you may just have laying around your house. So the first one is cosmetic tissue and we can just fold this and we can put our finger inside it and blend with it. Now this is really effective and it's great for very large areas as well. The downside of this, as you can see, it removes an awful lot of the pencil. So unlike the blending tool here, it's not just blending, it's also picking up. But you can see, look at the large area that we can do with this. Now if we want to be a little bit more precise, we can put something in this. I could use an embossing tool like this. You could even use an HB pencil, any kind of hard point you can put in and wrap round, and that will enable you to get more of a point on the end and to be a little bit more precise if you're going up to the edge of an area, for example. Another tool that you may have around your house is a piece of cotton wool like this. I've got a cotton wool makeup pad here, and again, I can blend. This is very similar to the tissue. I would say it's even smoother, but goodness, it's picking up a lot of pencil. And if you just need something similar to that that's just more precise, of course, you have a cotton bud or a Q-tip, and again, you can be very precise. Do let me know what you found most interesting about today's video. Understanding how you feel about things really helps me to plan and make the content on this channel. Drawing videos have been hugely popular here, much to my surprise, because I only really came on YouTube to teach watercolor painting. I'm delighted that you're also interested in drawing. It's a very good sign if you ask me. Let me know what other drawing videos you'd like to see on this channel. Don't forget, I have a whole drawing playlist that you can explore. And before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. There's loads of free stuff down there for you. There's free downloadable guides. There's even a free watercolor painting course that you can take. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out my 20 fast drawing tips video. It's my most popular drawing video ever. And you can watch it right now.